everybody. Good afternoon. So I'm an employee of G Healthcare, in case you can't tell by my Compassion Purple Polo. As JW said, been working there since 2008. When I started as an engineer, it really was the first project I was ever assigned to. So to see it here now in the US is a long time coming, but very exciting for me personally. So how does this thing actually work? I think Dr. Kennedy gave a pretty good overview. I'll try to go a little bit, one level deeper, I would say. So the first thing you do with the feature, as you see here, number one, you set those end title targets. You set an end title oxygen and agent target, and you set your minimum flow value. The GUI on the screen, the graphical user interface, looks very similar. We'll see that a little bit more, but not much of a learning curve for you to really understand how to use this. Looks pretty similar to your existing anesthesia machine. The second step, our gas module measures your end title values. Then both your set and your measured value go into the algorithm in step three there and you compare those two and see what kind of changes do I need to make to my anesthetic agent vaporizer and my gas mixer in order to get my measured value closer to that target value. And then the loop goes on from there. So every single breath that algorithm runs compares the measured to the set, what kind of changes do we have to make? And I'll show you graphically what that looks like on the system a little bit as well. What software and hardware components do we use? I think one of the best things about this, as we say on the left there is, this uses the existing digital infrastructure of an ASUS CS squared. By that I mean on an ASUS, the software controls the anesthetic agent and the fresh gas, your oxygen. So there's not a lot of hardware changes needed on this. ASUS had all the technological capabilities to do this. The only hardware change that's needed is there is a different gas module that you see in the middle there. That letter E on the end is related to a safety check that we run for ET control. And I'll give you a little bit more detail on that as well. Then on the software on the right there, a couple different indications on the screen when you're in end title control. There's the waveform message, your quick keys on the bottom left turn that more fluorescent blue, and your split screen changes as well. So while there's a lot of visual indications that you've turned on this end title control feature, the screen still looks pretty similar to what you're used to in the past. So again, from learning how to use this, we don't think there's too much of a jump for you to figure this out. What actually happens when you make a setting change? So what I'll go through on the top here, we show the concentration. So what is our anesthetic agent vaporizer doing? And then on the bottom, I'll show the fresh gas flows. Dr. Kennedy showed some real examples of this. We'll kind of step through it piece by piece and show you what happens. So the first thing in step one, you set a new agent value. We open the vaporizer all the way. That's the first thing we do. The same thing you would try to do if you're driving agent into the circuit. Vaporizer is opened all the way as step one while your fresh gas flow stays low. Second step, once that vaporizer is all the way open, we're gonna increase your fresh gas flow. In the values that Dr. Kennedy showed, you saw it doesn't increase it a lot, two liters a minute, three liters a minute, something like that, but we're still gonna put a lot of effort into keeping that fresh gas flow relatively low. If we open it to 10, 11, 12 liters a minute, you're gonna negate a lot of the agent savings from later in the case. Step three, once we start to approach that target end title value, your flow backs off, as you see on the bottom here. We try to back off the flow a little bit early because we don't want to overshoot your target too much. Then once you've actually lowered your fresh gas flow all the way to that minimum flow setting we showed, then we lower your anesthetic agent vaporizer setting. So those are the four steps that we're going to take to get you there. A couple of benefits that I see there, one of them in the upper left in red, we still put a lot of effort into keeping your fresh gas flow low. Even though we're gonna to try to get you to that measured end title value really quickly, the emphasis is still on minimize agent usage. Keep your fresh gas flow low while still getting you there quickly. And on the right there in red, these steps that you see on the screen, while you're not touching the machine to do them, it still feels very natural. These are still the same steps that you would take if you were doing this yourself. So it's not some unusual order of events you see, it's exactly what you would do, you just don't have to do it, is the good part. So what patients can you actually use end title control on? It is indicated for patients 18 years of age or older in the US. Then in blue, you'll see RR less than 35, you have to have a controlled airway. You can use it in any mechanical ventilation mode. You can use it in bag mode or spontaneous ventilation. So pretty wide array of patients that you can use it on. In red, the cases you can't use it on, non-circle circuit, obviously, cardiac bypass, if you have a surgery, it's gonna have disturbances to the lungs, big leaks in the system. Big leaks in the system don't go well with your measured end title values. So we try to avoid doing it on cases that are gonna have big leaks, and you cannot use it with multiple agents. So just one agent at a time when you're using end title control. 
Lots of safety mechanisms. I know there's a lot on this slide. Part of that is just to show you there is a lot of safety mechanisms related to this. I think Dr. Kennedy and Dr. Hoboard could speak to the fact you're probably not even going to know those are there because most of the time this just works, as they said. But there is a lot of safety checks in place. The ET control supervisor on the upper left, I always say that's like the bumpers on a bowling alley. If for any reason you can't get to your target end title agent setting, we'll exit out of end title control. And if that does happen, it's just the old ACES CS squared machine you had. You can still use fresh gas control, but if for any reason we're not able to get there, we will turn off the feature. There's also a system check and a leak check. At all times, we're running a check to make sure there's no leaks in your patient sample line going to your gas module. Again, because those readings at that module are so important to this algorithm, we want to make sure they're accurate and that there's not any leaks. So that check is running all the time as well. And then as I mentioned, there is a, a different gas module you need for ET control. That is for this fresh gas sample check. Every three minutes, there's a valve in that module that flips over and instead of sampling gas from the patient, we sample some gas from right inside of our system. We know the exact concentration of what's inside the system, so we make sure that's exactly what the module measures. That's just making sure it's still very accurate. So every three minutes, we're gonna do that. So a lot of safety checks behind the scenes here to make sure this thing is working correctly. How did we prove in the US this was gonna work? Uh, mostly for the FDA to make sure we got this through. We ran a big master trial across four different sites, about 248 patients, ran this in the 2017, 18, 19 timeframe. The main objective we were looking for in that study was what percent of the time is your measured end title value really close to your target end title value? The way I've described that before is what percent of the time are you within that purple box? So you're measured really close to your set. What percent of the time when you use end title control versus what percent of the time when you don't? And I'll show you what the results of that study were. Before that, a couple of example cases. So this is a case that did not use end title control. The user was trying to get to an end title value of 6% DES, that's the green line. The gold dots show you the end title value they actually got to. So trying to get to six, you get to three and a half, four percent, something like that. For the exact regions that agent cascade that Dr. Kennedy talked about. And title control, very different story. There is a green line behind that gold line, I swear, but you can barely even see it because the measured value is just right at your target value the entire time. This is exactly the purpose of this feature. And I think visually it shows it really well that you're gonna make that setting change very quickly. Your measured value is gonna get there. It's gonna stay there. Late in the case, they make some changes. Again, very quickly, the software reacts, gets you right back to that target value. On the oxygen side, very similar story. This is another case that did not use end title control. Trying to get to an end title oxygen of 40%, not only was the measured value not 40, it actually goes a little bit hypoxic. If you notice, they go a little bit below 21%. So another good feature of end title control, you can set your target ETO2 as low as 25%, but it's gonna keep it at 25% right around there. You're not gonna go hypoxic with this feature. So another built-in benefit. And title control, oxygen set to 50%, you're at 50%. Not much to see there. I've, I've heard jokes before that when the feature is working perfectly, it's almost boring to watch on the system because you see a lot of this where it's just right on your value and it stays there the entire time. So this, is another end title control case. The additional black dots here are the vaporizer settings that were commanded by the end title control algorithm. And what I think this speaks to is the complexity of the algorithm, how often it's making small little changes in order to keep your measured value at the set value. And then I think, again, when people say they can do this just as well as the algorithm can, to do this as effectively, every single time that black dot moves, you'd have to make a vaporizer setting change. And that's just not practical or reasonable of something you'd want to do. What was the final result of that trial? Again, going back to those purple boxes. What percent of the time were we really close to our target value when we used ET control versus when we didn't? On the left is with ET control, the taller bars you see, about 98% of the time when using this feature, you're right where you want to be. You're right at that target value. If you're not using it, half that. 45%, 41%, exactly as you saw in those graphs, you just don't get to that end title value you wanna be at. 
One of our secondary endpoints was about the response time and the settling time. So the response time being once you make a setting change, how long does it take for you to actually get to that setting? The two bars you see on the left there, ET control statistically significantly faster at getting you there. Because of all those little changes you saw on the black dot graph, that's why we're getting there so quickly. And then the settling time on the two on the right, once it gets there, how long until it actually stabilizes? And it's, again, statistically significantly faster with this feature. And more importantly, it's faster with you not having to interact with the system. So less button presses that you're going to have to do. Lots of other things that came from the trial. 83.5% of users said end title control was easier to use than fresh gas control for all the reasons we just looked at. There was no statistical difference in adverse events between the study arms, so no safety implications on that side. And then from some of the marketing material, we have all kinds of other good things. On the upper right, like we've said, about 50% less button presses that you have to do when using the feature. On the bottom right, less agent that you're going to use. So less cost, less agent use, less greenhouse gas, all the financial and environmental implications that come with using lower fresh gas flows as well. That's it. Excited to have the feature here. Thank you.